Hi! This is Julieta Yang Orfiano. Welcome to my video. If this is your first time on my channel, please like, share, and subscribe so I can notify you if I have a new video. This is the continuation of part 5 about intangible assets. I discuss in part 5 about the measurement after initial recognition. Just click above or the link below this video to watch part 5. In this video, I am going to tackle about the amortization of intangible assets with finite useful lives. Amortization of intangible assets with finite useful lives. The entity shall assess whether the intangible has a finite useful life or has an indefinite useful life. Many factors are considered in determining the useful life of an intangible asset such as number one, the expected usage of the asset by the entity. Number two, typical product life cycles for the asset. Number three, technical, technological, commercial, or other types of obsolescence. Number four, the stability of the industry in which the asset operates. Number five, expected actions by competitors or potential competitors. Number six, the period of control over the asset and legal or similar limits on the use of the asset. And number seven, dependency on the useful life of other assets of the entity. An intangible with finite useful life is amortized over the period of expected economic benefits, that is, the shorter between the period of its legal or contractual rights and the period over which the entity expects to use the asset. In some cases, the amortization period may be beyond the legal life of the intangible if the legal right is renewable and renewal is virtually certain and will be achieved without significant cost. Amortization shall begin when the asset is in the location and condition necessary for it to be capable of operating in the manner intended by the management. A variety of amortization methods can be used to allocate the depreciable or amortizable amount of an asset on a systematic basis over its useful life. These methods include the straight line method, the diminishing balance method, and the unit of production method. The method use is selected based on the basis of the expected pattern of consumption of expected future economic benefits embodied in the asset and is applied consistently from period to period. If that pattern cannot be determined reliably, the straight line method shall be used. The amortization charge for each period shall be recognized in profit or loss unless another accounting standard permits or requires it to be included in the carrying amount of another asset. For example, the amortization of an intangible asset used in a production process is included in the carrying amount of inventories. The residual value of an intangible with a finite useful life shall be assumed to be zero unless, number one, there is a commitment by a third party to purchase the asset at the end of its useful life. Or, number two, there is an active market for the asset. It should be probable that such a market will exist at the end of the asset's useful life and that the residual value of the asset can be measured. 
the account charge upon amortization is reported either as product cost, part of the cost of goods manufactured, as for example, amortization of patents, when patent is used in the production process, or a period cost, the selling or administrative expense, for example, amortization of franchise to operate a sales outlet, depending on the nature of the activity in which the intangible is used. The accumulated amortization is reported as a deduction from the related asset to arrive at its carrying amount. The amortization period and the amortization method for an intangible asset with a finite useful life shall be reviewed at least each financial year end. If the expected useful life of the asset is different from previous estimate, the amortization period shall be changed accordingly. If there has been a change in the expected pattern of consumption of the future economic benefits embodied in the asset, the amortization method shall be changed to reflect the change pattern. These accounting changes are reflected in the accounts without any adjustment for the prior period's amortization. Instead, a prospective adjustment in the accounts is made similar to the adjustment made for items of property, plant, and equipment. When the entity believes that carrying value of an intangible with limited useful life cannot be fully recovered from its use or sale, the asset is tested for possible impairment. Accounting for impairment in value and reversal of impairment of intangible assets takes the same pattern for impairment and impairment reversal of items of property, plant, and equipment. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you learned something from this video. I did part 7 and continuation of this video wherein I discuss in part 7 about the intangible assets with indefinite useful lives and assets not yet available for use. Just click above or the link below this video to watch part 7. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on my channel so I can notify you if I have a new video. Once again, this is Julieta Young Orfiano. See you on my next video.